was like, this is, this is great. I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> Staying up late thing. Uh, okay. Methodology for analyzing circuits. We're here, finally. We have all the tools we need to do some pretty badass circuit analysis. Later, we'll learn a more systematic method for analyzing the dynamics of a circuit, but for now, we can use broad strokes to get the idea. It will work most of the time, but occasionally you will need to write some extra KCL or KVL equations, or use a more advanced algebraic technique to solve them. Um, but most problems, this will work just fine. Uh, so, let n be the number of passive circuit elements in a circuit. So in the one we just looked at, there were two resistors and two capacitors and an inductor, right? So that's five passive circuit elements. So n would be five in that case. Uh, which gives 2n, so v and i for each element, unknown. So you don't know the voltage and you don't know the current for each passive element, okay? For the active elements, their inputs, you assume that they're known, known, known quantities. Like you know that your voltage source is 12 volts, for instance. Uh, the method is as follows. Draw a circuit diagram. A lot of problems are going to give you the circuit diagram because it's hard to communicate what the problem is until you get the circuit diagram. However, there are certain cases where the circuit diagram is not obvious uh, and you'll have to model a situation. Like, ah, oh, this is going to behave like a resistor, this is going to behave like a capacitor, etc. So draw the circuit diagram, then label the circuit diagram with the sign convention by labeling each element with the assumed direction of current flow. So we're going to have uh, 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 define our signs. So just like we did in the last uh, lecture, just drew some arrows. Um, and then write the elemental equation for each circuit element. So for a resistor, that's Ohm's law, V equals IR, so it's a VI relationship, right? For a um, capacitor, it was dV dt equals 1 over C times I. And then for an inductor, it was uh, DIL dt equals yeah, di dt equals uh, uh, 1 over L times V, right? So the, the voltage current relationship for each element, okay? So that gives you N equations, right? You have two N unknowns. You just got N equations. It's a good start. You just have to get another N, and you're good, right? So uh, for every node, so step four, for every node not connected to a voltage source, write Kirchhoff's current law, KCL. Okay? For each loop not containing a current source, write Kirchhoff's voltage law, KVL. You pr so step six, you probably have a linear system of 2n algebraic and first order ordinary differential equations and 2n unknowns to be solved simultaneously. Doesn't happen every time if you follow this. Um, there are some certain situations you can get into where it's not, um, uh, you have, you need one more equation to find what you need, uh, or, um, yeah, so that there are some cases where you need to write an extra KVL or KCL equation. But if you follow these rules, almost always you're going to be fine. Okay. Um, so, six. You probably have this linear system of 2n equations and uh, uh, 2n unknowns, but they're not just algebraic. If they were just algebraic, at this point it would be the old, like, put them into a matrix, do um, Gaussian elimination to solve for it, right? That You guys have been doing that for, like, it seems like forever, right? How long have you guys been doing, like, solving simultaneous equations? Yeah. Half your life. Yeah, I mean, it seems like they start you out, and it's like you do, you do substitution. When you first learn algebra, it's like two equations and two unknowns, and you got to, like, substitute one to the other, and then you do elimination. And then, like, eventually you learn matrix methods where you have to, like, make it a diagonal. Yeah, we can get there. 
the linear algebra they'll teach it to you. Linear algebra, a lot of it is solving. Yeah. So the differential equations part is a little bit of a uh, curveball. Um, you may or may not have seen it in your differential equations class. So solving simultaneous uh, first order differential equations is something that I don't assume everyone knows how to do Okay, in this class. Uh, but if you already know how to do it, you can go forward with that method if you like. Uh, if you don't, then it's fine. You can transform that into a single input-output differential equation and solve that. So that's what I assume you know how to do, is solve that type of equation. So um, to do step six, to solve, uh, here is a, uh, uh, a nice helpful way to proceed. So eliminate, so A, eliminate half of the unknowns, N of them, uh, by substitution into the elemental equations, okay? So your KCL and KVL equations are all algebraic equations, right? And so you can use these algebraic equations to eliminate half of your unknowns, essentially. Like burn all of those, because those ones are nice. They just like get rid of, they get rid of variables for you, typically pretty rapidly. Then, B, try substitution or elimination to get down to only those variables with time derivatives and inputs, okay? If this doesn't work, you know, linear, at least a linear algebra technique. So, substitution or elimination, um, I think there was a typo in the notes, by the way. I think it said substitution of elimination, or sub, it said something weird. To elimination, yeah. Substitution or elimination uh, to get down to only those variables with time derivatives and inputs. So you're, you're trying to, it's just like you're solving a system of algebraic equations, but you're trying to get down to the point where you can just solve the, the differential equation, okay, or system of them. Um, good. C, solve the remaining set of first order linear ordinary differential equations. This can be done either directly, if you know how to do that, or by turning it into a single higher order differential equation and then solve it, which is something that I assume that you guys know how to do. And that's probably what you've done in the past is if you have multiple first order equations, you can just substitute them into each other and, and get a single higher order equation. So if you have two first orders, you combine them, you get one second order. If you have three first orders, you combine them, you get one third order. <laughs> so that's the, the uh, order of the differential equation is equal to the number of first um, order ODEs in your system. When you combine them, that's how it falls out. So, I, so I'm going to say this. I, I'm, this method is going to work really well for doing most basic circuits that we're going to look at over the next few weeks, okay? Um, we'll, go, we'll go a long way with this. I'm going to introduce a more uh, systematic technique that should work every time. It's guaranteed to work, uh, as long as you've drawn a physical system. Um, uh, and that one, it's very, very similar to this, but it requires more vocabulary and concepts than we've got so far. So we're going to use this for now, and when we go to the more systematic approach, um, it's going to look almost identical to this, uh, but there will be some more specific instructions that are guaranteed to work in that case. So uh, that's something to look forward to in, like, it's several weeks out, though. It's probably like five, six weeks out before we do that. So we'll, we'll, we'll do this, use this method for a while. So, and then... My sign, you guys might have gotten these two plus and minus in this example might be switched. That's good. Is it good? Okay, awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, let's do the example. RC circuit analysis with a constant source. So, in the RC circuit shown, 
So resistor, capacitor, we often call them RC circuits. Okay, it has a resistor and a capacitor, and that's it. RC. They come up a lot. So uh, let the source have uh, be 12 volts, and if VC of T at time equals zero is zero, so the capacitor voltage at time equals zero initially is zero, what is the output voltage for time greater than or equal to zero? So I gave an initial condition. Does that sound like differential equations to anybody? Yes. Yep. We're there. We're there. We're doing it. So let's go through our steps. And I actually encourage you to just like actually write down the numbers. Just go right through them. Uh, one, the circuit diagram is given, right? Two, the signs, right? So the signs, I also, and this is how I'll do it on exams too. Um, I will often specify which direction you have to assume things are going when I give you a problem on an exam because then I know at the end if negative three volts is the correct sign without having to look at your diagram. So I give, I give the signs by showing the direction of assumed current flow, which is also the direction of assumed voltage drop, right? Okay. So these are the signs are given. Signs are given. Three. Let's go back and look. Right, the elemental equation for each circuit element. So how many, well, each passive circuit element, uh, yeah, I should, we should interpolate that there just to be clear. Passive. There is no elemental equation for active elements. So, so for each passive element. So let's draw a table. We've we've got this is what I what I often do. So I'll draw a table. So um, the elemental equations. Um, let's draw a table of our two passive elements. So R and C. And this is what I do because I don't forget to do one of them. So I just go through it at the beginning. I'm like, okay, how many are there? There are two. I'm going to draw a little table. There's an R and there's a C. And then I write my, my uh, uh, elemental equation. So this one is just Ohm's law, right? VR equals IR times R. What about for the capacitor? Yeah, and it's important to, to make sure it's dvc dt, right? Because the capacitor voltage. That's a common thing to leave off, and then you don't remember which voltage it is. So, yeah, dvc dt equals. And then IC, right? You gotta make sure. Well, we are going to recognize that IC and IR are equal, but we, we don't know that yet because we haven't written down that equation. Right? We know it, but we're just we're being very uh, careful and methodical, right? So we got to step four now. Cool. Uh, there is, let's see, this is the KCL one, right? Uh, yeah, KCL. So we got to do KCL for every node that's not connected to a voltage source. How many nodes are in this circuit total? Three. Yep, exactly. So three nodes, and we have, uh, whoa, uh, and we've got, so this node, this node, and this node. So which which nodes are connected to voltage sources? Yeah, so these two, right? This one and that one. 
So this one's not, though, right? So this is the only one that we needed to, to write KCL for. It's just this one in between R and C. So what does that KCL tell us? IR equals IC. IR equals IC. So KCL tells us IR equals IC. If you were interested in the current flowing from the source, you could apply KCL to these nodes. But we typically aren't super interested. And if we care about it later, we can always go back and do that. Uh, this, what I'm giving you guys, is like the most direct path to solve for all of the unknowns um, other than the, the, the source uh, uh, current, which may be interesting, but we could always solve for it later. We never have to solve a differential equation when you solve for that. It's just algebra, so we usually just ignore it um, when we solve the problem. So 5 is the KVL, right? There are no current sources in this circuit, so we don't have to worry about not doing one around a loop with a current source. It's not the end of the world if you do one with a current source or with a voltage source in the case of KCL. It just gives you an extra equation, so you have another variable to solve for. So, uh, so how many loops are in this? One loop. So let's go around this loop. Um, let's do drops as being positive. So it doesn't matter which direction we go. Let's do VR plus VC minus VS equals zero. So VR plus VC. Why is it minus VS? Exactly. So that's a voltage gain. When you go around clockwise, this is a drop. We said that we're going to do positive for drops, positive for drop, and then this is a gain, so we have to do negative. Yeah? So would you be okay if we, instead of doing positive, positives and minuses, mm -hmm. uh, did drops on one side of the equation and gains on the other? Since yeah, so... That's what we're about to be. Yeah. So if, if you want to skip steps, and I'm, I'll later start, later we'll know which variable we're trying to solve for in each of these KVL and KCL equations. And we, I, I will often just write down that variable equals, um, and it's a bit of a shortcut. Um, it's just one step less. So if, 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 however you want to write it, as long as you can keep it straight for yourself, I approve. So, yeah. The right answer is uh, much more important than following exactly the process, as long as it's a correct process. If you can follow a process that works for you, I'm happy, um, as long as it's a correct one. If you're like, this is my process and it's just wrong, then, um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm actually, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna solve this at all. So I'm just gonna leave it like that for now, because we don't know what we're gonna try to eliminate yet. Um, so that was step five, and and now we have all of the equations we we need. So we have two passive elements. So we have two times two or four unknowns, right? The voltage and current for the resistor and the voltage and current for the capacitor. So those are our four unknowns. We've got one equation, two equations, three equations, four equations. So can be solved. There is a derivative in here though, so there is a differential equation to be solved. There's only one different there's only one derivative in there. There's only one differential equation of our four, which means that we're going to end up with a first order differential equation. Okay, so six. This one, is, it's getting, you know, so this is solved, and this one we're getting to the point where it's, uh, 
you know, it's kind of up to you how you proceed as long as it's correct. Again, so if you could solve uh, for the variables you need, great. Um, and also, if you're into using matrix methods, that's totally fine to do. Uh, y you can use, like, so some people's like TI-89 calculators and higher can uh, essentially do the system of equations solution for you if you just type in the equations to the matrices. So like, I don't care if you use that. Uh, as long as you, because on the exams you can always use your calculator. I am not opposed to using technology to help you. you on the exam you have to be able to do it with your calculator. Like you can't have your laptop, unfortunately. Um, if I could eliminate the possibility of cheating on that, with that, I, I, I would let you guys have your laptops. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, uh, okay. So the first, the first thing that I suggested we do in step A here is eliminate half of the unknowns by substitution into the elemental equations. So. We can use our KCL and our KVL equations. Sometimes we call them constraint equations. Okay, they're a product of how the circuit's connected, right? Um, so we can use these to eliminate variables, and we know that we're trying to aim for having uh, the variables that we want left are the ones that have time derivatives and the ones that are inputs. So the ones that have time derivatives, in this case, VC has a time derivative, right? And uh, Vs is an input. So we would like to eliminate every other variable from here. Um, we can get rid of IR pretty easily, right? If we plugged it into here. Um, we can get rid of VR by using KVL. Right? Uh, so it's kind of up to you. I, I, what, what I chose to do in, when I wrote my notes was to, um, was to rewrite my R and my C table and do a substitution into each of my um, equations. So you need to stop calling me. I'm in class. Nobody calls me ever in life. I don't know why. I have two phone calls in. It's like, it's ridiculous. Um, you know, all weekend I was just waiting by the phone. Nobody called me. <laughs> right, yeah. And then suddenly everybody's like, yeah, let's, let's call Rico. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so, so R and C. So we have the um, equation up here. I, I chose to... Try to, uh, uh, I wrote that IR equal to, so sol solving this for I gives us VR over R, right? Which, if we eliminate VR using this equation, uh, we can get rid of VR completely from, from all the equations. So this one is uh, Vs minus Vc, right? So that was, I, I used this and I rewrote it as Vr equals Vs minus Vc and I substituted this in there. Okay, so I used my KVL Uh, pardon? Yeah, and now I'm going to use my KCL in the other equation here. So I've got uh, DVC DT equals 1 over C, and then I can apply my KCL and get rid of IC. Um, and instead of substituting IR, right? 
So I've now used KCL. And I'm left with the variables remaining are IR, VC, and VS. Okay? Those are what remain. VS is an input, so that's a known quantity. We want that to be in the solution. Uh, VC is the one we want to have left standing at the end because there's a time derivative of it. And IR, uh, we have solved in this first equation, right? So we can take it and substitute, so um, B. So I say, try substitution or elimination to get down to only those variables with time derivatives and inputs. So it's pretty easy in this case. We can just substitute sub the R equation into C equation. And that gives us dvc dt equals 1 over C times, well, uh, yeah, so there's, a, there's an R here, so I'll pull the R out. 1 over RC times uh, VS minus VC. And we're, we're there, right? We've got to our differential equation now. Let's rearrange it to look a little bit more familiar to us. Usually we have the VC terms on the same side, so um, we have RC times DVC DT plus VC equals VS. Okay. So now we have our first order linear ODE, and now like you you guys, all of this weight to solve differential equations is over, and you're ready to go. Okay. So um, that would be step step C. So we've got. Uh, Our, if you want to go through it in this sort of uh, um, sub sub bullets here, so the I this is one Roman numeral, lowercase Roman numeral one. Um, we want to find the so solve ODE is step C. Uh, the first step is to find the homogeneous solution, right? So the homogeneous solution requires that we need the characteristic equation, right? Which is what in this case? RC one time derivative of VC, so whenever you have a time derivative, you get a factor of lambda. It's a first time derivative, so you only get one. If it was a second time derivative, you'd get lambda squared. If it was third, you'd get lambda cubed, etc. Okay, so RC lambda plus, there's no derivative there, and the factor outside is one, and it always is equal to zero. which tells us that lambda, there's only one solution for lambda, and it is negative 1 over RC, right? Okay, so what is our homogeneous solution? So this is our VC homogeneous, FT, it's going to be some constant 
I'm gonna because we have C's in this, I'm gonna just call it K1. E to the lambda T, or if we plugged in lambda K1, E to the negative T over R C. Okay. Great. There's our homogeneous solution. Let's also find our particular solution. So the form of the input is that it's a constant, right? So we are going to say uh, our particular solution we're going to assume is a constant as well. So it was 12 volts constant input. We're going to say, okay, it's going to be it's going to be K2, uh, also a constant. Um, and we've got uh, to substitute this now into our original differential equation. So this guy up here. We've got RC times what is the time derivative of, of a constant is zero, right? So it's RC, RC times zero plus K2, right? Just VC, we're assuming it's just K2, equals VS, which is 12 volts. Now, normally I would say we should write like V naught, so that we don't actually write in 12, because we don't want to really carry around the numbers, but we'll do that for now, um, and recognize that K2 is just equal to 12 volts. Cool. Now, our total solution, or general solution, solution is Vc of t equals Vc homogeneous of t plus uh, Vc particular of t. And the homogeneous was K1 e to the minus t over RC. And the particular uh, uh, was K2. So we know K2. I'm just going to leave it as K2 in the equation. So now, last step four, apply initial condition, right? So this is the uh, uh, specific solution. Apply initial condition. So I said that Vc of 0 was equal to 0. So the capacitor was not holding any charge when we started. So if we apply that, we get 0 equals k1 e to the 0, right? plus K2, or K1, which is what we're trying to solve for here, is equal to K2. K1 was the original constant that we had in our homogeneous solution. So K1 equals K2. So that means, therefore, Vc of t is Oh, negative. Good. Negative K2. So, uh, great. So now we have, we can rewrite Vc is equal to, so K1 we found out was negative K2 e to the negative T over RC um, plus K2, which is equal to K2 times 1 minus e to the minus t over rc. And that's our solution. Where K2 is 12 volts, we already said here. Um, and we could, we could plot that, right? We could sketch that. And that would be time here, vc here. We would have a, an exponential decay to k2 
which is 12 volts. So you would have a capacitor that's charging up. Yeah, because at time equals zero, the starts off at one, so it's one minus one. Yeah. Okay, so that was your first uh, full-blown circuit analysis. Um, yeah, welcome aboard. <laughs>